Hello everybody, my name's Ray, welcome back to the channel. Today it's going to be a little bit Ray loves to rant. <laughs> it's good natured ranting, there's no actual force behind it, but this is my reaction video to Illumicrate's top. And when I say top, they've, they've actually specified best 100 sci-fi fantasy and horror books of the 21st century. Remember when the New York Review of Books brought out a list of 100 books that were supposedly the best of the 21st century? And everyone got annoyed about it. <laughs> yeah, Lumicrate have decided it would be fun to do the same thing, but with genre fiction. They published a list today on their Instagram uh, saying what they thought the top best 100... Sorry, pickles. <laughs> got a little kitty. I might just stay here and cuddle the cat. She's a reassuring presence. She's not trying to troll me with terrible books in the top 10. She probably enjoys Twilight. So as some of you might know, I find it very, very difficult to DNF books. Once I've started a book, oh gosh, there we go. Once I've started a book, that's that. I usually have to finish it, particularly if I got past the kind of 40% mark. There are a few exceptions to that. I didn't finish Swallows and Amazons because it was really, really, really boring. Um, <laughs> and in the top 10, in the top 10 of Illumicrate's allegedly uh, best sci-fi, fantasy and horror, there are two books that I didn't manage to proceed with and one book, which is number one, which I decided I didn't want to finish the series because I couldn't be bothered. So yeah, so the top 10, oh, but it's not even the top 10. Oh, this list is just, it's just missing all the good books. Well, if someone was to ask me, what would be the best science fiction, fantasy, horror of the 21st century? What sort of thing would I put on there? I would go for stuff where there is just that quality. I'm not going to go into too much detail. You all know I'm a huge Robin Hobb fan, a huge George R.R. R. Martin fan. John Gwynn, I have similar feelings about. The writing is excellent and the quality just oozes off the pages. It's so well put together. The stories progress, so much happens and yet the writing's exquisite. So yeah, absolutely. We'd, I'd be saying the Live Ships trilogy by Robin Hobb. Um, I think that's just creeping into the uh, 21st century. The Fool's Errand, Golden Fool trilogy, uh, the Bloodsworn trilogy. I've only read the first one, but it was marvellous by John Gwynn. Um, the First Law, I've, again, I've only read the first one, but it was brilliant and I'm looking forward to finishing the rest of that series. Real gritty fantasy, brilliant characterization, unforgettable characters. Um, yeah, what else? I mean, George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice and Fire from Storm of Swords onwards, that's, uh, that's 21st century. I could understand if they want to keep series off that started in the 90s. I kind of get that because obviously it's not the whole overarching um, series. For science fiction, I'd get some Blake Crouch on there. He's fantastic. Dark Matter Recursion It's now being made into films. It's now being adapted for television. I'd get some of that in there. Fast paced science fiction thrillers. If you want some, some harder sci-fi, I'd go for kind of your Adrian Tchaikovsky, Children of Time. If you want your kind of high concept science fiction fantasy, China Mieville's done a lot of good stuff. The City and the City. It's a kind of detective novel set where there's two cities kind of alongside each other, not acknowledging each other, and they kind of overlap in their territory. It's fascinating. Horror. Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez was absolutely exceptional. That came out not that long ago. You know, if you want to go extreme horror, go for Brain Worms. That was interesting. You know, there was there's, there's lots and lots of good stuff out there, and that's the sort of thing I would be including on an on a list like this. Let's see what made it into the top ten. I'll just put it up here for you. This is their top ten. I'm underwhelmed. <laughs> What's Twilight doing on there? Like, I have read some bad books in my time. I have read some bad, bad books. 
I've read the entire of the first book of Fifty Shades of Grey, and that was practically Twilight fan fiction that it started out as. And my goodness, that was unreadably bad. But I got through it. I got through it. I've read some terrible, terrible books. Twilight, I made it four pages, and then I was just like, I can't read this. I absolutely can't read it. It's unreadably bad. Um, <laughs> and I know it's an easy target, and I know a lot of people love it. And if you're going for a book that had huge cultural, cultural importance, you know, a lot of teenagers adored it. A lot of people who point out that it's kind of problematic that you've got a kind of, um, you know, vampire who's hundreds of years old hitting on a teenager. Um, there's a load of kind of creepy stuff in terms of imprinting that I've heard about. I haven't actually, like I say, I, I know the story vaguely, watched the film, that was terrible too. I've heard people reviewing it whose opinions I'm very, uh, you know, I'm very... <laughs> but what's it doing in the top ten? Oh my days, I love you Illumicrate, uh, right, Illumicrate, like, you are fantastic. I I, un I I unbox your I unbox your um stuff every month and I adore your products and I adore your special editions but seriously what is Twilight doing on your list <laughs> it's so bad that's one I couldn't really even begin because it was just so <clears throat> this is how you lose the time war I mean I don't really begrudge that being on there because I know a lot of people do love it but it really wasn't for me it's this epistolary novel between red and blue and they are two I think they're kind of going into places and kept doing some kind of capture the flag type missions basically they're they're enemies and my understanding is that it's a love story and that they write to each other in the kind of like oh well you didn't get here first I've already set off the bomb or whatever it is they're doing in their <laughs> in their missions um I just for me, the writing, and it just didn't conjure anything for me. It was very poetic, but it didn't... When I was reading these letters, it wasn't summoning up in my head any imagery or idea of the world that they were inhabiting. It was very much kind of little poetic snippets of worlds um, that didn't really leave much of an impression on me, and I found it incredibly difficult to get into. Um, although my friend did buy me that as a present, very sorry haven't read it all. I think I got about 20% of the way in and then stopped because it just wasn't, it just, I wasn't feeling it. But I have heard good things about it and you know it's definitely up there as something that people do tend to recommend to each other. But top 10 when you've got, when you've got like Adrian Tchaikovsky writing, when you've got like so much good stuff. I can't believe they put Twilight I still can't believe they put Twilight in the top 10. What are you doing, guys? Top 10, they've got two, like, both a series and a book by R.F. Kuang. R.F. Kuang is fantastic. Um, I haven't actually read either of these, but I have read her writing and I've heard her speak twice, and she is phenomenal. Should she be occupying both second and fourth place? I mean, that's, like, 20% of the top 10. Maybe they could have spread those out a little bit. And we all love a bit of dark academia, so I don't really begrudge that one. Percy Jackson, I haven't read. Um, doesn't it have a bit of a reputation for being like Harry Potter, but not as good? I'm not sure. Haven't read it. I can't really comment on it. Um, I am willing to bet good money that it's not as good as a Robin Hobb. <laughs> But I can't really, you know, I can't really complain about books I haven't read. That is not right. But but I have read the first of the Hunger Games. Now, Hunger Games is good. It's a good book. I rounded up to four stars, I think, when I read the first one. But I didn't love it enough to carry on with the series. It all felt very like it's stuff you've seen before. Battle Royale, your running man, your dystopian TV is a lot crueler. And you've got this kind of deathmatch situation going on often with teenagers. So yeah, for me it felt a little bit like this is something I've seen before, it didn't feel particularly original, and it was just okay. Quite a lot of the characters die before you can get attached to them, but that's kind of the name of the game. I don't particularly mind it being number one, it's very very well loved. It wouldn't be my number one, but I'd probably put it somewhere lower in the top ten. I was pretty nonplussed by a lot of what was in the top 10. Top 20, Noughts and Crosses was one of my favourite books growing up. 
Um, it must be very early 21st century because like, my, my understanding was that it was in the 90s, but maybe it was young adult then. That was an incredible story. It moved me very, very much when I was a teenager. So I was really happy to see that represented on there. I quite like the name, name of the wind was number 98, <laughs> just because I, I don't think it deserves to be 98. It's a, it's, it is a good immersive fantasy novel, but it isn't finished. It isn't finished. And if it's not going to be finished, and I haven't read the second one, so, and I've heard that the second one has, I've heard that some people I trust have beef with the second one, so I'm not going to make too much of a comment on that. If you're going to put books like Cloud Atlas in the mix, like, I'd rather that they just didn't put it in there at all than put it 91st, because it is such a good literary fiction book. And I can understand you not wanting to put that sort of thing on this kind of a list. But if you're going to put it on the list, it's better than 91. Come on. <laughs> it's a really good book. It's got lots of different kind of things going on. And I have no idea how they managed to make a film out of it because they did. And they actually made a film that was quite true to the book. But I mean, that is not a filmable book. <laughs> Uh, six interlocking stories um, that kind of open like an onion and then open back again. Some of them are science fiction, some of them are post-apocalyptic world in the middle, there's a, a story with an, a sentient um, AI being, um, an android, um, and there's lots of, like I say, interlocking kind of layers along the way. Um, so yeah, but if you're gonna stick it in, like, you know, stick it higher than 91, come on. <laughs> 37, Stormlight. I mean, like, Stormlight isn't my favourite series, but it's better than 37. Like, it's one of the, like, Brandon Sanderson is a giant of the genre. Everybody loves him. Like, they are just, they're just trolling us, aren't they? Just They're just trying to, they're just trying to get this reaction, and this is the reaction I'm going to give them. <laughs> House of Leaves. Oh, my days, I hated that book. I hated House of Leaves with a passion. It is so pretentious. There is so much stuff in there that just, at one point something awful happens to a Pomeranian and you're just like, why? Why? You're just doing that for shock value. You're just doing that to annoy people like me and to upset us for no reason. Why would you do that? Oh my days, the footnotes. And because I have this thing where I can't just skim, I ended up reading every single word of that book, including the big long lists of like kind of potted plants and things that were in this particular house and the inventories and the lists of names and the lists of monuments and oh I read every single last bit of it oh it was torture I hated it <laughs> hated that book hated it with a passion I mean if you maybe 54 on a list of horror no novels <laughs> science fiction and fantasy 54 oh my days sorry Owen if you're watching I'm sure you're not but uh <laughs> I know it's his favourite. Sorry, Lenny, if you're watching. I know you loved it. Apologies. Oh, if you're going to put Station Eleven in there, you've got to put it higher. It's it's a beautiful dystopian book. Again, if you're going with the literary stuff, the literary stuff is good. You want to get you you want to get a right mix in there. Like I don't mind. Like I say, I, I wouldn't really particularly mind books that are mainly for entertainment in there. But like <laughs> you're pitting them against these kind of beautiful books of the genre that evoke these kind of post-apocalyptic worlds that like, oh, Lachlan Mora 69, like 69. Oh, you're breaking me, Illumi Crate. Lachlan Mora is one of the most amazing books. Like I would put that top 10 easily over the 21st century. Well, maybe top 15, but like, oh, I love that book. 69, I mean, I almost let you off because 69 hurt. Giggity giggity. But uh, <laughs> 60, 69. Oh. Go out and buy Loch Lamora and read it because it's so good. It doesn't deserve to be down there. Uh, I don't even want to think about Robin Hobb being in the 30s. Like, she is, she's my number one. And only one represented. Like, fair enough if they're only doing one series for author, but we've got two in the top 10 for RF Kwong. And she's amazing and I, I don't have anything against her but like put some hob in there as well oh my days so good and you know what i think they did just like this is this is the this is the last thing i'm going to complain about the last thing i'm going to complain about but the thing that the thing that gets me the most on this list is that they've put my beloved robin hob at number 32 and above robin hob they've put the book thief 
Now, first of all, I wouldn't call the book thief sci-fi, fantasy or horror. It's a historical fiction novel and the only kind of, if I remember correctly, the only thing about it that's in any way supernatural is that it's narrated by death, which is this really, really gimmicky way of telling the story and it doesn't add anything to the story, it just puts you at a slight distance um, from the characters. So sometimes when I don't have a problem with people writing about historical events. I don't have a problem with people writing about emotive historical events. But there are some authors who do it and it feels really exploitative. They feel like they're using these historical tragedies for their own narrative purposes. And I know a lot of um, a lot of people have complained about Hanya Yanagihara's A uh, Little Life, saying that it's like yeah, misery porn. But it's basically appropriating these terrible situations and you know, using them for dramatic effect. Now, the difference is A Little Life is an absolute masterpiece, in my opinion, and it's so... Like, there isn't a moment where you don't believe in these characters. These characters are real. They live, they breathe, you believe, even though the kind of things that have happened to main character Jude are cartoonishly awful. They would never happen to a single person. You believe that they have happened to this single person. And this character embodies the damage and it's it's just so real and it's just so immersively heartbreaking and it just it just works and there's a beauty to that when you can tell a story like that and it takes an awful lot of talent. If you're just an okay writer and you take something like the Second World War and like the Holocaust and you write a really inauthentic sounding story that's obviously trying to, to jerk tears it just it it just didn't work for me at all there wasn't a moment when i wasn't reading the book thief that i wasn't aware that i was reading a book i could almost see the author writing as it happened german friends have told me that the uh, german cultural references are inauthentic too including the language that they use apparently uh, and uh, like i say people have gone into this elsewhere apparently a lot of the insults that they use aren't actually insults that any German person would use and the whole thing is set up to try and make you feel things and it's very very contrived and I really really disliked the book. Not only did I dislike the book but I don't think it's sci-fi fantasy or horror. To put, to put a book that I, that I really really hate in front of Robin Hobb that's not even of the genre what are you doing, Illumicrate? You're just doing this to hurt me. I swear down. <laughs> uh, have a look through the full list, everybody. I would be very interested to hear what you have to say about it. I am not a fan. <laughs> I am a fan of Illumicrate, though. I will continue to get their boxes. I will continue to read their lovely books. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who will very much enjoy the selections and will feel that their tastes have been fully represented. Often you do find that in these lists it does get kind of overtaken by the literary, the pretentious, and, you know, The Hunger Games is a decent book and people want a good story. So even if it has got ideas that have been recycled in it, they've been done well and they've been done in a way that appeals to a generation. And yeah, I applaud. I, I applaud it. I'm not, you know, like if I could write my own top 100, except I don't think I've read 100 books. Or if I have, I'll probably have to put everything that I've read in there. Which means House of Leaves is probably going to go on there. And <laughs> I don't want to have to put House of Leaves on any top 10 lists. Top 100 lists. Oh, right. That is it. <laughs> Rant over. <laughs> I'll catch you all soon. And like I say, don't take any of it personally. Uh, it's just my opinion. And yeah, I know a lot of people who love these books. And your opinion is just as valid as mine. Mwah. See you later.